Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mastering the Draw license application strategy video. And in this video, we're gonna do a little bit deeper dive into the Colorado draw system or application process. Um, and in this, we're gonna go over elk, deer, and antelope draw, the differences between that and the sheep, moose, and mountain goat draw. Also, the allocation numbers as far as how many tags they're allocating for resident and non-resident and how they work those different point systems, whether it's a antelope, elk, deer, um, or a sheep, moose, goat, or a desert sheep, and there is differences. So as you can see there, I put no points for desert sheep. So let's get into it and we'll discuss it. So application process. You must buy a qualifying hunting license in order to enter into the draw, and that goes for the primary draw or the secondary draw. Um, realistically, if you buy an over-the-counter tag, you don't have to buy that hunting license, but to enter the draw, you do. Um, and when I say qualifying license, that means for the cheapest one that you can buy, there's a number of them, but the cheapest one you can buy for an adult is a small games license. And youth, it is a youth small games license, and that is very, very cheap. Um, you also have to you also have to buy a habitat stamp that's not refundable to get in there. That's about a ten dollar and something cents fee. Um, also, an application fee, which just kind of trickles up. This year, I think it's nine dollars seventeen cents. But anyways, that's kind of a graduating process. They add a few cents, depend like a percentage, based on the year. Um, if you want to get a preference point for a sheep, Rocky Mountain sheep, moose, or goat, that's going to cost you a hundred dollars and that fee is kind of set at this point that has not moved up or down for the last few years so that's a hundred dollars to get that point fee now for the app now for just kind of that process and how you apply for it um, basically they give you one through four choices on your application um, the cool thing is is your first choice will take your points but that's the only that's the only choice that they actually put your points for a preference draw. Once you get down to second, third, and fourth, they don't go over anybody's second, third, or fourth choice until they've went through everyone's first choice. So they don't use your points once you get to second, third, or fourth because they don't have a basis on that. So if you draw a second, third, or fourth choice, you build a point for that year and you get a tag. Now naturally, those are probably not the most sought after units um, or hunts, so they're gonna be a little bit tougher to be successful on but that's kind of a nice way where you can build a point and also get to hunt that year. Um, for group applications, um, what's different from Colorado than for most other states is that when you go into the draw, they will only take the lowest point holder. So let's say that you, know, you have a group of three, one's got eight points, the other's got six points, the other's got two points. That group application point level is gonna be at two. So they don't average your points in Colorado. Now, there's not a limit to the size of the party you can have for elk, deer, and antelope. That's unlimited. You can go in there with 15 people. You just have to make sure there's enough tags for you guys to draw um, when you apply. They do not over allocate like they do in Wyoming. Now, for sheep and mountain goat, that limit is two. Mostly that's for residents. Um, very rarely um, is there ever going to be enough tags for a non resident to get in there and draw. Um, mountain goat or sheep tags <laughs> and be able to draw a party. So I don't recommend that. That's mostly resonance. Um, then when you dive into the secondary draw, the one thing to remember about the secondary draw, there is no group applications allowed in the secondary draw. Um, that's just a single application only. And as I said before, the secondary draw, those permits that are those tags that are allotted in that secondary draw are mostly leftover permits from the primary draw that did not get drawn and so they're going to be less than ideal type hunts but it's a good opportunity starting last year they started to include some of those tags that either a they didn't get bought or bought by the deadline put in place by colorado so those got recycled into that um, and then those were available in the secondary draw and number two there is also some permits that if they got surrendered back to the Division of Wildlife before they came out with that secondary draw list, they will put those on the list. The one change they made this year is what they're going to do is they're not going to allow any of those permits that took at least six points or more for a resident to draw back in to that uh, secondary draw. 
And the other nice thing about the secondary draw is youth get priority on all of those permits that they apply for in the secondary draw. So keep that in mind. Um, and then of course you've got the leftover limited license sale that goes up and that's for all limited licenses that are left after the secondary draw and over the counter permits go on sale. So now we get to the quotas. Sheep, moose, and mountain goat, no more than 10% can go to non-residents for those species. Um, so that's an up to quota. Um, elk and deer, no more, well I shouldn't say that, that's not an up to quota. They, have, they do have set aside permits for non-residents in that scenario, but they try to get that to a 90-10 split. Sometimes it's off just a little bit, but so that's how that is. Um, elk and deer, no more than 35, this is where it gets confusing, but no more than 35% of licenses requiring five points or fewer by resident applicants can be issued to non-residents. So let's say for instance, you had a unit that took 15 points for non-residents to draw, but it only took five, five points for resident to draw, they're still gonna allocate 35% of those licenses to non-residents. But once you get into this next one, that sort's a little bit goofy. So no more than 20% of licenses requiring six points or more from the years 2007 to 2009 Average by resident applicants can be issued to non-residents. I don't know why they haven't updated that or changed it. That's about the time that they went into this, so they created this uh, different tier. But if the average was six points or more by residents at be well between a three-year average of 2007 2009, those permits are only going to be 20%. And you know that that stays in effect regardless if that comes down or if it trickles up in the amount of points it takes. So just remember that. Um, Antelope, the nice thing about that is it does not have a non-resident quota between resident and non-resident. But if you have ever looked at the point range, there's more residents with high numbers of antelope points than there is non-residents. So you don't really need a quota in place because typically the residents are gonna draw more tags than the non-residents anyways. Now we'll go into the actual point system breakdown and it's a little complicated when you're dealing with sheep, moose, and goat just because of the way they do preference slash weighted points. So I'll just describe it to you the best way I can. So hopefully you'll be able to understand and digest it. So the first three years that you apply for a sheep, moose, or sheep, moose, or a goat, and that is a rocky sheep, not a desert sheep, um, those first three years are considered preference points. And you build those preference points now for all ram tags, antlered moose tags, and any mountain goat tags, it requires more than three preference points to draw those tags. In which case, those weighted points that you accumulate after each year, and by the way, you do have to purchase a hundred dollar, or pay a hundred dollar point fee to build those points, regardless if it's preference or weighted points. Um, but once you get past those first three years, those weighted points act basically as a bonus point. We've ran the different draw systems and it's essentially, they come to the same thing. They give you extra chances in the draw or it, you know gives your application more weight in the draw. Um, they get to the same thing by going different ways around. But at any rate, that's how the sheep, moose, and goat tags are drawn. The only time that you will have the preference points actually come into play and not the weighted points is there is a few antlerless moose and you sheep tags that actually can be drawn based off the, those first three preference points you receive because there's not enough non-resident applicants applying for those permits to get up into the weighted point system and in that case like you know if there was one tag and there was two people that applied if the one guy had two preference points and the one guy had one um, the guy with two points is going to draw every time over the guy with one. The guy with one has no shot. So that's how that works. Desert sheep, there is no point system on that. You do have to select if you apply for rocky sheep or desert sheep. You cannot apply for both. Um, if you choose to apply for that desert sheep, there's only one tag available for non-residents and typically it's one in over a thousand. Um, it used to be better odds than that, but not anymore. So that's just a wild card. Elk, deer, and antelope, 100% preference. So what they have there is the highest number of points that puts in for that hunt. 
that's who's going to get the tag. There is not a random draw available for those species. The only time you get a random draw, they introduced a hybrid draw years ago, and what the hybrid draw does is it sets aside a certain percentage of those tags to be drawn at random intervals for the rest of the applicants. Now for deer and elk, that does not come into play for non-residents. Only residents get those permits because by the time they do this random draw after the preference draw, I mean the non-resident quota has already been hit. So you won't have any tags go to non-residents in the hybrid draw for elk and deer. Now antelope where you don't have any quota, we have seen a few people draw antelope tags or a few non-residents I should say in that hybrid draw. It's not something to count on. You know, usually it's one here and one there, but that can be done in the antelope draw. And that's pretty much all I got. Um, I hope you found this video informational and interesting. Um, if you did, like and subscribe. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.